What's up, y'all? So we about to hop into this video by Screen Rant. This is how The Simpsons predicted 2020. Oh my God, we're about to revisit 2020. We're just supposed to forget about that year, the worst year. The worst year over 2019. Which year was worse? Was 2019 worse -er than 2020? Or was 2020 worse -er than 2019? Mm, for me, I think that 20... 2019 was the worst year, in my opinion, but whatever. Without further ado, y'all, we about to hop straight into this video, so let's go. While the events of 2020 may have seemed impossible to predict, typically there is one iconic, clairvoyant animated show that managed to get things scarily accurate. 2020. <laughs> Need I say more? While this year may have felt like a decade, we are only just over halfway through. A lot there of shit happened, happened in 2020, man. To last a lifetime. And for the most part, this year has been impossible to predict, with a lot of us having to put our plans on hold indefinitely. I guess I'll never go to Disney World. Not only are our plans on hold, but so are film and TV studios with the likes of Tenet and No Time to Die on indefinite hold. But there seems to have been one show that knew everything was coming all along. By now, we all know that the writers of The Simpsons are a bunch of mystics, eerily getting seemingly hundreds of things right over its long run. But some of the things that have been featured on the show feel oddly specific to 2020. While these are usually just jokes or asides, they are all the way too real now. In this video, we'll be looking at some of the scariest predictions The Simpsons made, including global pandemics, video game hype, and even bankruptcies. These are some of the craziest pieces of fiction that came to life. I know they had a lot of Trump Let's predictions. The obvious one. That's President crazy. Trump. By they now, had a lot of Trump predictions. The knows that long before President Trump ran for office, The Simpsons called it. The episode in question, Bart to the Future, aired back in 2000, which is 20 years ago and makes me feel very old. It wow. shows Bart and Lisa in the future, with Bart being a slacker while Lisa episode. is president of the US. While Lisa is the first female US president in the episode, they do make a reference to her predecessor. As you know, we've inherited quite a budget crunch from President Trump. President Trump may have been elected That's back crazy. in 2016, with 2020 potentially being his last year in office, but it is definitely a line that is extremely relevant in 2020. When asked about the line, writer and consulting producer Dan Greeny couldn't remember who initially pitched it or how it hmm. arose, but said how the show embraced American culture and how Trump was a part of that. But we all secretly know they have a time machine or a TARDIS or something in the writing room, but they just refuse to tell us. The show also makes reference to Ivanka Trump running for office, but that isn't till 2028. God, no. Of course, we couldn't talk about 2020 <laughs> without mentioning the pandemic that has ripped across the world. COVID-19. You might have heard about it. COVID-19 continues to wreak havoc on our society and change the way we operate for the foreseeable future. And if you asked anyone last year how they first saw this year turning out, a lot of people wouldn't have suggested a global pandemic. I was personally looking forward to Disney World, but of course the writers at Simpsons aren't the same as us mere mortals with them predicting a global pandemic. In the season 4 episode Marge in Chains, the show predicts a global flu spreading across the world called Osaka Flu, and it is spread by a Japanese factory worker coughing into a package. The two don't share the same name, or I even the same this type episode. of virus, and the Osaka Flu originated from Japan as opposed to the province of Wuhan, but there are some scary parallels between the two. As Springfield begins to panic, they desperately seek a cure, but in doing so, accidentally set off a chain of events which are also strangely similar to 2020. Uh -oh. As the residents of Springfield panic and go into a frenzy, they push over a truck, only to release a horde of killer bees. As you may know, earlier in the year, the Asian giant hornet, otherwise known as the much more sinister name, murder hornets, were spotted on the western coast of the United States, triggering mm -hmm. a great deal of alarm. Not only does the sighting of murder hornets in the US pose a threat to local wildlife, but let's face it, a creature that is known as a murder hornet is somewhat concerning. The threat seems to have been somewhat contained for now, but with the way 2020 is going, I am definitely sleeping with one eye open. The Simpsons may not have called them murder hornets, but to have killer bees in the same episode as a global pandemic is an ominous coincidence. I'm cured! I mean, ouch! What? Why in terms you? of 2020 predictions, the Marge and Chains episode is the gift that keeps on giving. As the title refers, Marge is arrested in the episode for accidentally stealing a bottle of bourbon and spends 30 days in prison. Marge's arrest leads to mass riots across <laughs> Springfield. While the events are very, very different and the beats in the episode are purely satirical, the mass riots due to a controversial arrest have striking parallels to the justice riots taking place across not only the US, but the world. 
If the episode had just featured this arrest, then it may not have been enough to compare it to the riots of 2020. But with the inclusion of a global pandemic and killer bees, the coincidences are just too much to not include. A controversial statue in the episode of Marge and Chains is what leads to the riots, with Springfield Park Commission failing to raise enough money for an Abraham Lincoln statue, and instead going for a statue of Jimmy Carter. He's history's greatest monster! <laughs> in fact, the episode ends with Springfield unveiling a Marge statue. <laughs> It's beautiful. Which is the best statue you could make, but it actually turns out to be the Carter statue with Marge's hair. So pretty close, I guess. But there's another episode that refers to a controversial statue. In the episode The Telltale Head, Bart cuts <gasps> off the head of this the This episode is so creepy to me. Jebediah Springfield, in an effort to be popular. Bart eventually returns the head and it is reattached to the statue. But for avid Simpsons watchers, you know the character of Jebediah is a controversial one. Lisa uncovers the truth that Jebediah is actually a literal silver-tongued pirate called Hans Sprungfield, who brawled with George Washington before assuming the name Jebediah Springfield, making him an imposter and false icon. However, Lisa decided to keep Springfield's identity as a secret as she noticed the good he brought out of the local residents. And while Bart didn't take down the head of the statue due to political agenda, like the episode Margin Chains, the taking down of controversial statues is eerily similar to what's happening today on the back of the Justice Riots. The episode Another was so ominous to me. The Simpsons writers comes in the form of them predicting the fate of department store chain J.C. Penney's. In a 2006 <laughs> episode of The Simpsons, Damn. we see the family at the mall looking at a desolate and derelict J.C. Penney's store, which in the episode had completely shut up shop. Flash forward 14 years and news coming out in May that the chain had filed for bankruptcy due to the financial implications of the coronavirus. Although Damn. it may not be as shocking of a prediction as it first appears, with the chain reportedly financially struggling for over a decade now, it may have been safe to guess that JCPenney's would close down. It also would be a safe bet that the Simpsons writers sold all their penny stocks. Hey yo. No, don't you have any follow through on anything? And that there will be several people on Wall Street calling them up to find out what other stocks they should buy or sell. Woohoo! $25. Or does that count as insider trading? Another huge effect of COVID-19 are workers leaving the office and working from remote locations. This means companies are becoming even more reliant on video conferencing, leading to platforms such as Zoom rising in popularity and usage, as well as close-ups of your colleague Suzanne while she repeatedly asks if you can hear her as her cat meows in the background. But that's a very non-specific example. Anyways, video calling may be a commonplace technology now, with almost everyone having access to it, but it was something yet to be discovered in the 90s. But of course, The Simpsons predicted its rise all the way back in 1995. In the season six episode, Lisa's Wedding, which flashes forward to Lisa's future, we see Lisa and Marge talking over a picture phone, something strikingly similar to Zoom and other video calling platforms. Another thing that episode predicts is World War III, but let's hope that doesn't happen. I mean, another piece of I don't think that that's really so a prediction. That doesn't feel like and the global pandemic a prediction is the rise of Animal Crossing. With most people stuck inside all day, the sales of Nintendo Switches skyrocketed with them selling out quickly. I am still waiting to get mine, along with many Nintendo games. But the most prevalent game was by far the life simulation game Animal Crossing. I need to, I want to play this to game in the real world. Fans took to the virtual world and the game has been extremely popular since its release. And while the Simpsons may not have predicted the exact rise of Animal Crossing, I want to play Animal Crossing so bad. It looks so calming. Games, with an episode in 1998 referring to a game as Yard Work Simulator. Sounds familiar? While virtual gardening <laughs> and farm games aren't exactly new, with the popularity of Farmville in the early 2010s, it does feel very relevant to today with <laughs> Animal Crossing being such a major part of the zeitgeist. But with VR becoming ever more popular, I would be very intrigued to take part in the game of Yardwork Simulator, while my actual yard turns into a mini Mirkwood from The Hobbit. That's so it weird. It's safe to say that the last two Star Wars, The Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker, respectively, have been somewhat controversial amongst its fan base. But one Star Wars outing that has been, for the most part, universally loved is the Disney Plus original show The Mandalorian, which centers on Pedro Pascal's lone bounty hunter. While recent Star Wars entries in the Star Wars saga, including the prequels, have been accused of moving too far away from its roots, The Mandalorian pays homage to the westerns that inspired the original trilogy, with The Mandalorian centered on a western-style hero in the mold of Clint Eastwood or John Wayne. In particular, the former, who starred in Sergio Leone's masterful Dollars trilogy, a main inspiration for Star 
Star Wars. But for cinema aficionados, you would know that in turn, the Dollars trilogy is inspired by samurai culture and the works of Japanese legend auteur Akira Kurosawa. Kurosawa also directly inspired Star Wars, with Lucas taking the main story from Kurosawa's Hidden Fortress as inspiration for A New Hope. The Mandalorian goes back to these roots, and although Lucas isn't the direct creator, his influence is felt in the show. This return was predicted by The Simpsons when Randall Curtis, a parody of Lucas, announces he's going to return to his roots of lifting off samurai and western movies. I'm going back to my roots. Plots and He's so little. lifted from westerns <laughs> and samurai films. While The Mandalorian may have been released in 2019, with a second season underway and more similar Star Wars projects on the horizon, it is still highly relevant in 2020. What? Is he short like that in real life? And on a 2020 prediction, The Simpsons got wrong. Dun dun dun. Well, maybe. In the episode Sunday, Cruddy Sunday, which aired back in 1999, The Simpsons Everybody predicted fat? a team in red with jerseys that strongly resemble that of the San Francisco 49ers oh. winning the Super Bowl in Miami. As sports fans will know, the Niners took on the Kansas City Chiefs this year in Miami for Super Bowl 54. But unfortunately for Niners fans, the result was very different, with the Chiefs edging out the California outfit in the fourth quarter and taking the championship back to Kansas. However, for you astute viewers out there, you will have noticed that the Chiefs also wore red, while the Niners wore white at the Super Bowl. So maybe they did get it right after all. What was your craziest Simpsons prediction? Like I said before, like the Trump predictions were insane. Like, I remember watching some of these, those episodes with Trump in them and not thinking a damn thing about it. And then to have him in office today like currently is insane and it's a little creepy like how they're able to like predict all these things and like the shit actually come true that's that's really weird but yeah y'all that was my reaction to this video if you guys enjoyed my reaction please make sure to leave a like comment and subscribe and i will see you in my next reaction video bye